uh, challenges to treatment. Why, now that we've kind of briefly looked at what central sensitization is, we've looked at ketamine, we've looked at what the, how complex it is and what, what can happen, why don't more people do it? Well, number one, lack of education, okay? Right now, whatever brief stuff you've had ex been exposed to, you actually know more, or at least been exposed to more than most physicians in America have to both ketamine, ketamine infusions, and central sensitization. Physician stereotypes, you know, quite frankly, there's still a lot of physicians who thinks pain patients are some, you know, infectious disease. It's like, you know, you got a bunch of Zika patients or something, and it's like, stay away from me. Uh, you know, you probably go in there, you know, putting masks on. Oh, I don't want your chronic pain. You know, it's, 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 it's it really, I mean, it's really bad. It's really bad. A lot of stereotypes against pain patients, um, and most of it has to do with egos. You know, if they don't understand something, instead of asking, gee, what's going on? Let me help you. Please educate me. You know, they become uh, aggressive, right? Kind of like the guy who's asking for directions, you know, and he's lost. He won't stop. He won't ask for directions. He become hostile to his passengers and say, I know what I'm doing. I've been driving for 20 years. It's like, well, buddy, you've been driving wrong for 20 years, but nobody ever brings that up. Uh, physician laziness. Uh, some physicians are just, quite frankly, they're lazy. They really don't want to learn. They really don't. They just want to go home, clock in, clock out, get their paycheck. Uh, facility logistical issues, you know, it took us a couple years to get the surgery center up and going so we could actually do ketamine infusions. A lot of other physicians haven't invested that much time or money into doing that, so they literally will just shove someone in a closet, give them a bunch of ketamine and call it a ketamine infusion, and that's totally not what it is. Uh, complexity of the science, you know, it kind of just skimmed over some of these slides, but I think you can at least appreciate that this is not simple science. This is, there's a lot going on here. And they don't have the time, energy, or sometimes even the mental capacity to understand that, and that's a problem. Complexity of the treatment. It's not just giving a medication. It's doing a well-balanced um, uh, procedure. Lack of coverage. Now, you know, after all this, that might end up being the biggest one. There's a lot of insurance companies that don't pay for it, and it takes a lot of time, a lot of labor, a lot of uh, people to do it. Um, there's there's, very, there's um, very few insurance companies that cover it, and the ones they do that really don't pay that well. And, and that's where we get the final one, minimal reimbursement. Um, those are the, the biggest challenges, quite frankly. You know, it's, it's very hard to, um, uh, to, to do something that, um, where, where you lose money or something like that. So, so those, are two, those are some of the biggest things. I have this slide up here. I just want to read it to you. This is a, um, a physician, okay, an anesthesia interventional pain doc in the Chicago area who happens to be the head of a fellowship training program. Okay, um, uh, so that means he actually is the one teaching future pain doctors, future interventional pain doctors, what to do. And this guy, so this guy was supposed to do an independent medical examination on a work comp patient uh, who has CRPS. Not only CRPS that's diagnosed by me, but CRPS is diagnosed by, I believe, about seven other physicians, including her, her uh, three other pain doctors, two other surgeons, and like a primary care doctor, okay? So like everybody knows that this lady has CRPS. And complete, complete resolution of CRPS symptoms with ketamine infusion. So you kind of proved it with, this, with the ketamine infusion. You know what I mean? Like if she didn't have CRPS, she didn't have central sensation, ketamine infusion wouldn't have helped her. Complete, 100% relief. So this is what this guy had to say, because this guy was basically paid by attorney to say that she has nothing wrong with her and this case uh, should be dismissed. So, been there, right? Who said that? Yes. Yeah, no, I, listen, everyone has, and, and, and that's why I bring this case up. It sort of brings, why are we even talking about this? It brings it home. This is why, because this, this uh, piece of work, I'm sure his parents are so proud of him. Um, he said, <laughs> well, they might be. I mean, he's making a lot of money, you know? He's making a lot more than I am. He moved into a $3 million house, so he's making a lot of money. Anyway, uh, in the USA, there are some, it's like 12,000 square feet, too. It's a massive house. I looked it up on Zillow, it's nuts. Anyway, neither here nor there, he might be listening, I don't know, but I didn't say his name, so that's good. In the USA, there is some following, even absent FDA approval for the use of ketamine infusions, which is, by the way, not true. Ketamine is absolutely an FDA approved drug. If you saw 1970, hey, I don't know, maybe he was sleeping the last 46 years, but anyway. In documented CRPS criteria meeting cases, miss, I blanked it out, did not meet diagnostic criteria for CRPS, and therefore, the use of ketamine infusions was not indicated. So it's kind of interesting. First he says it's not approved. Then he says, oh, well, I guess you could have used it for CRPS, but she doesn't have CRPS. He kind of contradicted himself. Anyway, she also does not have, quote, unquote, central sensitization, purely speculative diagnosis. Did I not just spend some time talking to you about central sensitization? Did I not just spend some time showing you some 
pretty intense functional MRI pictures and show you so much information that I skipped over because there's too much information. And this guy says that all of that crap is speculative. It doesn't even exist. It was all made up. She does not have, quote unquote, central sensitization, purely speculative, nor does she have peripheral neuropathy. All the EMGs are normal. She is therefore not a candidate for ketamine infusion. So, um, so, so basically, this is, what, this is the challenge we see. Okay? This guy, now, what has happened to this lady? They said, you're at maximum medical, medical improvement. We're not going to pay for anything. Based on this, you know, sort of pay-for-play um, uh, report. 